so hello everyone with the start of a new month new week we are going to look at a new avenue called as protocol deviation so if you are a clinical research professional or even if you are learning clinical research then you might have at least once heard protocol deviation has occurred at your site so what exactly is it protocol deviation and why do protocol deviation concerns everyone who is involved in the clinical trial without wasting further time let's start this session So in this particular session, we'll look at three prominent aspect. First is we'll look at what exactly is protocol deviation. Then we'll look how to report this particular protocol deviation and what exactly protocol deviation have impact on clinical trial. We are also going to focus on that. So let us first understand what is protocol deviation. So a protocol deviation is nothing but a change or variance from the study procedures which are stated in the study protocol, consent document, recruitment process or study materials. Example, the questionnaires and which is originally approved by the IRB. Okay. So whenever you see there is a protocol deviation, it means a change from the study procedure which is mentioned in the study protocol or the consenting document or the recruitment process. Okay, and these particular changes are unapproved. Okay, that is protocol deviation. Protocol deviation is a general term and it includes a variety of factors such as protocol exception, changes made to avoid uh, the harm to the subjects and also protocol violation is also a subset of protocol deviation. Now these particular uh, deviation are mentioned in 45 CFR part 46 that is code of federal regulation and 21 CFR part 56. Protocol deviation can be either a major deviation or minor deviation based upon the nature and the impact of the protocol deviation. So protocol deviation can have issues with compliance and also they can be categorized based on serious or non-serious nature of it. Okay, so this is in general what protocol deviation is. Another serious aspect is your career. So if you want to make a strong fundamental career in clinical research, then you have to uh, pursue a good diploma or certification. So our friends at Clinical AIM Research provides amazing certification in the form of advanced certification in clinical research. They also teach you about CDM and pharmacovigilance. So you can go ahead and check them out. And they have the best uh, industry expert as well as the fees are minimum. So go ahead and give them a call. Now let us understand what exactly are the examples of protocol deviation so that you will practically understand how deviation are identified. So protocol deviation can be even if the subject uh, has come for a visit outside window period. Okay. So in each and every protocol you have a certain window period. Uh, so it can be uh, sometimes uh, three days plus or minus two days. Okay. So if he comes outside plus two days or minus two days then that is a deviation from the protocol. Okay, deviation means change from the defined study protocol. Another example could be that the vital signs are obtained prior to informed consent. So as you know that after an informed consent, you can do any kind of study activity, but not prior to that. So again, if vital sign timing is prior to consent timing, that is a protocol deviation. If the participant has been weighed with shoes on, so that is incorrect weight, again a protocol deviation. If the UPT test has been done for the female subject, but the sample is not shared. So again, you would not know the pregnancy status. Again, that is a protocol deviation. Another example would be the failure to report any uh, uh, problems or adverse event uh, to the sponsor or the DSMB team. Okay. And if you are not reporting any safety event, that is also considered as protocol deviation and any uh, particular study drug or medication dispensing error or dosing error that is also a kind of protocol deviation so these general are the example of protocol deviation so you would understand that any activity that is conducted outside the defined protocol would be considered as a deviation if that deviation is impactful serious non-serious that is another matter 
but you should understand the fundamentals of protocol deviation. Now let us look how exactly to report a protocol deviation. So protocol deviation can be identified by you whenever you conduct a visit. For example, it is outside a window period visit or the subject uh, informs you that uh, I did not notify you a particular safety event or you forget a uh, dispensation of IP. That is by you. Again, uh, protocol deviation can be identified by the CRA whenever he comes for site monitoring visit. So once the protocol deviation are identified, how to report them? So protocol deviation again, I, as I've said, uh, is categorized between major and minor. Okay, it is done uh, by the principal investigator, and they also consider the impact of subject safety. That assessment is done by the principal investigator. Again, if there are any emergency deviation that require uh, reporting to the IRB then that should be immediately done okay these are done uh, in order to consider the safety of the subjects again any major or non-emergent deviation uh, that has to be reported and uh, that require the IRB approval okay before they occur because if you know that these deviations are going to occur for this subject and they shall have an impact on safety then that has to be informed to the IRB prior and taken the approval if there are any minor or administrative protocol deviation again that would be required to reporting the IRB and the continuous review of the IRB for example every ethics committee uh, carries, uh, carries out uh, audit for all studies in that particular institute so in that if there are minor deviation or administrative kind of deviation then that has to be submitted in the quarterly annually or biannually review to the EC. Again, depending upon the category, uh, the deviation has to be uh, notified immediately uh, to the IRB, to the sponsor representative, that is the CRA, and to the sponsor as required. And the event report form, uh, which is particular for your particular study, uh, those details has to be completed and reported as per the requirement of the study protocol and the regulatory requirements. So this is how you report a protocol deviation. Okay, so if it has a very uh, significant impact, then immediately notify all the members and then complete uh, the details. And if it is a routine or minor deviation, then you can submit it to the ethics committee cumulatively in the annual or biannual or quarterly report. Again, whatever the deviation occur, there has to be a corrective and preventive action, which we uh, call in generally as Kappa. Okay, so what are the corrective action that you have taken? What are the preventive action that you have taken to avoid the future deviation? That also needs to be mentioned in some PDs. Okay, so this is regarding reporting of protocol deviations. Now let us understand what are the impact of protocol deviation on clinical trial. So the first impact is that protocol deviation may have uh, impact on completeness, accuracy and reliability of the clinical trial data. So if the data is collected outside the window period or if the particular data is generated which does not follow the uh, completeness of the data, it is inaccurate or non-reliable, then again that is of no use and that can have a significant impact on the clinical trial and assessments. Again, this protocol uh, deviation can affect subjects right safety and well-being which is the primary criteria of concern okay in any case subject right safety and well-being should not be compromised and if there are multiple PDs then that can hamper those criteria again if there are any important protocol deviation and you have recruited or enrolled some subject then it can also violate the eligibility criteria of the protocol and uh, they can also fail to uh, collect the data at key endpoints Okay, so if the protocol deviation are not kept in check, then it can have a very severe impact on the clinical trial and their outcome. And finally, these protocol deviations are very important as they help us to uh, conduct the clinical trial as per the defined protocol and timely notification of the protocol deviation or any divergence from the study activity helps us to understand the scope of it. They help us to learn. Uh, for further improvement and implementation of any corrective and preventive action. So this is regarding the protocol deviation.
so i hope i was able to help you understand protocol deviation now i will also bring uh, protocol violation in the next uh, lecture so stay tuned to it subscribe because we'll also discuss what are the impact of protocol violation when it comes to clinical trial so thank you for watching this video please make sure that you uh, like share and subscribe to this channel and share with uh, your colleagues in cl uh, clinical research so that we can reach maximum people and create awareness thank you